a review of a turntable. This one is from Lenko. It's the L3809, henceforth to be known as the 09 in this video because it saves a bit of time. This particular turntable is a sort of semi-sequel, I suppose, to a video review I did about, what, two weeks ago now on the stereo system from Technics, the Ottawa F. In that video, I was describing how the Ottawa F should really be known as a lifestyle system, and I gave a whole heap of reasons why. Well, the Lenko 3809, or the 09, <laughs> the 09, really should be seen in a similar fashion. It is also a lifestyle turntable, a lifestyle design. Why? Well, sound quality is just one of the items on the designer's list. One of the items that was part of the build budget spend in the first place. Sound wasn't the be-all and end-all, it wasn't the only thing that Lenko was looking at here. Unlike a Riga RP1, which oddly enough features in this review a little bit later on, that particular design is wholly focused on sound and nothing else. But the Lenko, sound is important, but it's one of a menu of items. You also get that Technics DJ Cool aesthetic, which some people really love. So there's that sort of look on there. Lenko itself does see this model as a budget DJ tool and it mentions the fact in its manual. So there are DJ furniture elements all over this particular design to aid DJs in their cause. The O9's interface is also convenience based. It has nice little switches for on off and speed changes. You have to move the belt on the Riga's pulley from one little notch to another to change the speed, for example. So there are convenience elements towards the 09's interface. There are also other features built in to the 09, such as the built-in phono amplifier, which is very useful if you want to keep the footprint of your hi-fi system down. It also helps if you're on a tight budget so you don't have to buy an external phono amplifier and it also cuts down on other elements too like you don't have to introduce external cabling it's all set up for you ready to go that kind of thing there's also a built-in usb port so you can rip vinyl to an external computer file for listening on a digital audio player or some such so there's a lot going on with the 09 in terms of its overall design and there is a pretty wide audience that Lenko as a company is aiming this turntable at. It's not just the guys who want sound, only sound and nothing but sound quality. There are other interests out there, other areas of the buying public that Lenko wants to attract with this particular turntable. There's the price, of course, which is something I've yet to mention. And the price needs a little bit of comment, I feel. The recommended retail price, as far as I can tell, is around 240 pounds, 239, 240, something like that. So you will see that price point hither and thither. But I've also seen the 09 priced at 219. I think Amazon might be doing that at the time of the making of this video at any rate. In the UK at least, I think Richer Sounds are offering 219 for the 09. So yes, with a 10 table like this, with all of its features, 219 is a fairly attractive proposition. Now before we get to the closer look section, and that's on the way, and if you want to skip to that now, there's a link in the description. It has all the chapter headings you can bounce around on this video or skip bits. Just check in the description. But before we get there, I'd like to address not one, but two elephants in the room. It's quite a large room, hey? Both of these points were triggered after I had spread the news of the forthcoming release of the 09 around social media and the internet. And these points emerged from those postings and the issuance of the same news on my website. So I thought it might be a good idea to talk about those in this video. Number one, the brand name itself. <music> Let's 
Lenko does, in fact, have a long and venerable history, being founded in Switzerland with its hi-fi history at least, dating back to the 1940s. The company even had a factory in Italy, and later teamed up with current cartridge maker Goldring back in the 50s. Lenko produced a host of idler and belt-driven designs, including the highly regarded L75 in the 60s. The company ultimately went bankrupt in 1977 and was sold and then resold again, ultimately finding a home in the Netherlands under the care of Comax International NV. This is a company that might sell the Lenko turntable range, but it also deals in kitchen accessories, phones, and more. The Lenko turntable itself is made in Hong Kong. Now, do I think that it would have been rather nice to retire the brand name to keep the history of the original company intact and in place within that earlier golden era? Absolutely, yes. Can I understand why a modern company has adopted the brand name to use in the market today? Absolutely, yes. This is not the first modern organization that has adopted an older, trusted brand name to use in business in an attempt to gain a competitive edge. It happens, you know that, I know that, so let's quell the nostalgic outrage and let's move on. I'm here to review a turntable that's sitting in front of me. I'm not here to review a memory. And that goes for the other elephant in this rather cramped room, the fact that this turntable is made in Hong Kong. The Chinese derivation from this turntable will no doubt trigger instant condemnation from some quarters in terms of potential sound and the design. However, judging by my experience with the company's earlier L3808 model, I actually expect decent sound performance from this one. Why is that? Well, if you're looking at a Chinese built belt drive turntable, then yes, those particular designs do leave something to be desired. I've heard Chinese designed budget belt driven turntables featuring badges slapped on the top, which say things like Audio-Technica, Dual, Sony, Marantz, and more, and all sound relatively poor because they're based on cheap and nasty belt drive motors. And there's nothing wrong with belt driven designs. The best turntables I've ever heard are belt driven designs. I have many reference turntables here and most of them are belt drives. Problem is though, the cheap and cheerful Chinese standards to belt drive motors are not up to the same standards. Nowhere near. The direct drive designs though, well, they are a different matter. In effect, the direct drive motors on these models save these turntables from themselves, in effect. And that's what I found with the Lenko L3808, which is based on a very generic design. I think Jewel also used the 08 generic design for their own purposes. So that L3808 look, well, you could find that being sold under different banners, different brand names. But the overall performance from the L3808 was surprisingly good. And in fact, on my website, I gave it an award-winning rating for a very low cost budget turntable design. Hence, I have high hopes for this new version, the 09. More than that, I made a few inquiries. And it appears that this new iteration, the 09, is actually an in-house Lenko design. I asked the company Lenko for a few words and they gave me this quote. And I quote, 
Our design was a close cooperation between our manufacturer's designer and our product manager. With the L3809, we started from the design of our popular 08 and asked our factory designer to create something more modern, different from several other models in the market, and they are all very similar. Lenko mentioned a stream of hidden sockets at the rear of the turntable, something I'll mention in the closer look section. Lenko also mentioned special feet used underneath the plinth, which I wasn't able to get much more info than that, but I can only guess helps isolation, but that's just my guess. Also, this new design was undertaken, according to Lenko, and again I quote, to be a little less bulky, providing a unique, stylish, modern design. So, again, I'm here to review what's in front of me. This review will not be coated with prejudice or unreasonable bias. Now, having got that off my chest and having got rid of those elephants, well, there's nowhere to sit, is there? Let's get a little bit up close and personal with the 09, shall we? And let's take a closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the Lenko L3809 Direct Drive Turntable. And let's do a top-down view first, shall we? And we'll look at the near left, which offers a large round play pause button. To the right of that are smaller rectangular dual select speed buttons for 33 and the third and 45. Moving across to the right-hand side, you'll find a power knob that sits on top of the light for the strobe. At the far right is a pitch slider. This proved to be very useful indeed because, as it was, the Lenko had a speed drop issue. And I had to nudge the pitch slider up a little bit just to compensate. There are a number of mobile phone apps on the market which will help you to find the correct speed. If you need more help on that, give me a shout and we can talk about that in the comments section. In the center of the plinth is the rather thin aluminium platter covered by a stiff branded felt-like mat. I actually wonder what this ubiquitous material actually is because it is fibrous, yes, but less felty than the classic felt mats of yore. Moving to the rear of the plinth now, and we find at the far left a pair of line-out RCA sockets. You can use those to connect to an external phono amplifier or an integrated amplifier. Just to the right is a toggle switch, where you can actually select the external phono amplifier if you wish, or the Lenko's internal phono amplifier, which is situated inside the plinth itself. Moving slightly to the right again is a USB port to enable the ripping of vinyl to a computer file. I was surprised, nay shocked, to actually find the physical disc version of Audacity in this package instead of what's more commonly seen nowadays, a download link in the manual. There's also a figure of eight power socket and a second power switch, a sort of master power switch on the far right. As Lenko states in its reply to me, the rear sockets and controls are hidden under a recessed shelf, which, yes, helps the aesthetics, it looks rather nice, but it does harm ease of use. It's relatively difficult to access the sockets and controls at the rear. Sure, it looks nice, but it was harder to install than the 08, the previous model. A dust cover can be fitted on top of the turntable, and you even get a bright orange duster with a 75th anniversary logo on two, which is a nice touch. So what can we expect from the 09? And how does it differ from the previous model, the 08? Let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. To 
begin, I listened to a track called First Movement, Brackets Jumping Biz from the Electric Light Orchestra. This is an early track of theirs, but it's useful because it's an instrumental piece. The lead instrument is a Spanish guitar. I think it's Spanish guitar. And there's lots of cellos and violins and goodness knows what else drums around and about. So lots of organic instruments to provide a sort of frequency challenge, I suppose you could call it. Now I wanted to compare the 09 with a range of different turntables just to see how the 09 fits into the budget arena and to judge its own sound quality. Now before I got into that in earnest I gave the internal phono amplifier a quick listen and it's okay. It's no great shakes. I wouldn't call it wonderful in any way. It's usable. It's fine if you have no cash to buy an external model. But I wouldn't rely on this for the long term. But I would recommend something like a Project Phono Box MM, £70 in the UK, something like that. Get one of those when you can and plonk that at the rear of the Lenko, it will help the sound enormously. I myself used an external phono amplifier during these tests because I wanted to review the turntable and I didn't want to review the internal phono amplifier, which would have skewed the final results. So let's begin with the head to heads, shall we? So how did the 09 compare to the 08? Before we get to the sound, let's compare design notes. The 09 might be a new version of the old model. It might be next one up in numbered designation terms, but let me tell you this. The L3809 is a completely different turntable from the L3808. Apart from a couple of buttons and a very similar but not exact platter, the plinth is different, the feet are different. The tone arm is different. The interface layout is different. There's no pop-up light on the 09. The 08 has a tethered power cable within the plinth itself, but the 09 has a detachable figure of eight cable. Even the printing around the pitch slider is different. Even the dust cover hinge system is different. The 09 is a completely different turntable. The 09 in strict terms is not an upgrade, it's a completely different design, which backs Lenko's assertion I quoted earlier. In terms of sound quality, well, there were differences. There were differences between the 09 and the 08. They were relatively subtle, but the differences were certainly there. First up, the mid-range sounded a touch more focused on the 09. The lead guitar offered a honed sound, leaner, more agile. Was that possibly to do with a slightly improved tone arm? I don't know. Secondly, the bass across the soundstage was a little more present now, just a slight increase in the lower frequency extension that provided a touch more meat in the bass regions. Had that got anything to do with the new plinth possibly, or even the different head shell, which is yet another change. Thirdly, there was a little more insight across the upper frequencies now. Did that have anything to do with these special feet that were mentioned by the company perhaps? Again, all of this was subtle. None of these changes were incredibly dramatic in any way but the string section seemed to offer new detail and information on the 09, adding more complexity in the mix and adding stronger layering under that lead guitar. I've got to say, the head shell of all of the differences on the 09, the head shell really took my eye. It did look a level above the 08 in particular, so I decided to isolate the head shell 
during the sound tests. So I took off the l 3808s head shell, I put the 09s head shell on to the 08 turntable. The new 09 turntable being a lot stiffer of metallic construction instead of the more plastic construction of the 08. The 09s head shell was a lot heavier, denser, I would say. With the 09s head shell in place, the 08, well, the presentation from the 08 was more confident. Bass was a little stronger, a little firmer. Sound overall did improve. So as a quick aside, if you happen to own an L3808, I would recommend a head shell upgrade. As far as the results of the head-to-head, -head, well, when you compare the 08 with the 09, I would recommend the 09. The 09 does have the edge. Now, if you are an owner of an 08, does that mean I recommend upgrading the 08 to the 09? Well, I probably no. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say the differences are that dramatic to warrant an upgrade. Saying that, the 09 is easier to find on the market out there than the 08. So I wouldn't go, if you haven't got a turntable and the 09 looks interesting, I wouldn't go all out to find the 08. There's no great treasure to unveil in terms of the 08's sound. Saying that, if you do find the 08 on a really good deal, then by all means go for the 08. But overall, given a level playing field in terms of availability and price, I would choose the L3809. For the next head-to-head, -head, I looked at the Riga RP1. Now the Riga comes in at a vaguely similar-ish price-ish and it also has basically the same cartridge. So in sound terms, how did the Riga RP1 compare to the 09? Well in strict sound terms, the Riga wiped the floor with the Lenko. Upper mid-range showed a new level of clarity from the Riga. The acoustic guitar not only offered a perky string plucking strut, but guitar resonances were recognisable now. Bass now had a more organic and rounded structure, almost 3D in presentation instead of the former 2D flat canvas effect from the Lenko. Finally, treble was light and fragile with lots of air and space infused in and around it. The Riga is thus sonically superior to the 09, but that Riga tone arm is, as I've said on numerous previous occasions, the star of the show here. The Riga arm is a work of art in budget turntable terms. The 09 tone arm is basically a poor copy of what a hi-fi tone arm should be when you directly compare the two. Even with basically the same cartridge in place, that Riga tone arm proved to be a better support system for it, coaxing more detail from that same cartridge. So the result of the Riga 09 shootout, well, it was no surprise in sound terms, at least. I thoroughly expected that result. But prospective 09 owners, well, they shouldn't feel downhearted or disappointed with this result because, well, I wouldn't buy this Lenko just purely for sound terms anyway. You buy a Lenko L3809 for exactly the same reasons that you would buy a Technics Ottawa F sound system over a separate hi-fi system. It's for the overall experience. Sound is, as I've said before, just one part of a menu list of items here. Sound is not the primary focus on the Lenko as it is on the Riga. Riga have gone all out to push the sound quality on their turntable design and it shows. 
On the other hand then, the 09 wins out over the Riga in terms of convenience features. There's the built-in USB port and phono amplifier, which the Riga does not have. In ease of use terms, the speed change facilities are a whole lot friendlier on the 09. Then there's that retro cool Technics on the cheap thing. All the Riga offers you in return is a sort of Puritan-like minimalism, and you may not want that. The next head-to-head -head I can offer you is with the Fluence RT81. Now when I review a turntable package, that is a turntable that comes bundled with the tone arm, but more importantly the cartridge, I tend to review the package as opposed to immediately throwing the default cartridge away and putting a favourite cartridge of mine in place. Rather than doing that, I like to review the actual package. Reason being, that's what most people will listen to. They will buy the actual turntable package, they'll put the default cartridge onto the turntable and it will stay there for years most of the time and if they do upgrade, well the default cartridge will sit there for quite a while before that upgrade actually occurs, again in most cases. Nevertheless for this head-to-head -head, I wanted to change the 09's cartridge and there was a good reason for that. Firstly the subject of this particular head-to-head, -head, the RT81, arrives as a default with the Audio-Technica AT95E cartridge, which is a superior cartridge to the 3600L that appears as a default on the 09. Now this was quite fortunate because listening to the 09 as is, out of the box, probably more than any other hi-fi turntable I've listened to, the 3600 really stands out as a bottleneck for the 09. You really get the feeling when you listen to the 09 that it's capable of a little bit more. The 3600 cartridge, well, you really feel as though you're listening to the cartridge. You really feel like that's the door that you have to get through to get to the sound quality behind it. It feels as though it's in the way. So that's how I did this head-to-head. -head. Both turntables used an AT95E cartridge with an elliptical stylus tip. Playing the 09 with the AT95E cartridge in place did improve the sound a lot. So much so, in fact, that if you do buy yourself an 09, I would break up the package. I would remove the 3600L and I would upgrade the cartridge as soon as. The sound now offered a much greater degree of definition right across the frequency spectrum with the precision and focus from the guitar sounding, well, far superior to that 3600L cartridge. The AT95E gave the guitar strings a distinctly metallic aspect. The guitar cut through the music now, adding a crisper and more fluid movement to this particular area, while percussion now benefited from a, well, an infusion of air and space. The string section also benefited from the same aspects, giving the entire string section greater bulk and weight, which was all very well and good, and it was very well and good, but how does the new upgraded 09 compare to the RT81 with that same cartridge? This shootout produced a score draw in terms of sound, I felt. I felt that the Fluence offered a greater sense of bass weight across the track with the power of the string section backing the guitar to great effect. The mass from the Fluence's plinth 
played a big part in the presentation. The percussion and the cellos gave the music, again, heft and mass. It gave the music occasion. In many ways, the resultant sound was classic 70s-like presentation. Slightly golden upper frequencies with a big, bold lower end. On the other hand, the 09 with the upgraded cartridge added to the mid-range. It had slightly more superior sound in the upper frequencies. There was more air and space around the mid-range. There was more focus in the upper mids and the treble. And there was also a greater sense of mobility from the 09. The music seemed to shift at a faster pace via the Lenko, with each point of the music nailed and ticked off with a plum. Yet the sense of bass weight wasn't in the same class as that provided by the RT81. So as I say, the results of this particular shootout was a score draw. There were pros and cons for each turntable. So yes, if the direct drive versus belt drive competition ended with mixed results, what would a true direct drive turntable head-to-head -head provide? And how about upgrading that cartridge again from an AT95E to the more modern variant of the same, the VM95E? Again, the 120X arrives default with a VM95E. So to give the Lenko a chance, and just to see if I can push the Lenko even further, I also tested the VM95E on the Lenko 09. And again, especially with the upgraded cartridges in place, and don't forget you're having to spend extra cash on these upgraded cartridges. With that upgraded cartridge in place, the price point for the 120X and the Lenko 09 is basically, again, similar-ish. Now, before I comment on the head-to-head -head between the Lenko 09 and the 120X, just a few comments about the Lenko itself with the VM95E in place. The VM95E is far superior in sheer overall sonic performance to the older AT95E. The sense of tonal realism is far greater with the VM model. The VM also offers a maturity that makes listening to this cartridge a real pleasure. There's a real rhythmic bounce from the VM95E, a certain musical joy combined with that realism I mentioned that grabs the attention and keeps you rooted to your seat, waiting to hear what might appear next. So with the VM95E in place on the Lenko 09, how did that compare to the 120X using the same cartridge? Well, before we get to the actual sound, what the 120X has that the Lenko does not is attention to detail in terms of parts quality and build quality, and it shows. And that reflects in terms of sound. So where the Lenko delights with its VM95E in and around the upper mid-range detail, the 120X takes that detail level up another rung of the ladder. Tonal realism offers the same story. The crunch and aggression from the cellos are more in evidence via the 120X. While the 120X expands the soundstage left and right and creates an epic delivery of the music as a whole. The entire organic flow from the 120X is also more naturalistic and at ease. The performers played from the 120X sounded as though they were having fun. They sounded at ease. They sounded more relaxed. In short, in sound terms, the 120X was the winner here. So after that lot, how do you conclude a product like the Lenko L3809? And would I recommend it for you to buy? Now, 
First off, the big problem is the Audio Technica 120X. It's a big problem if you're looking to buy the L3809. Which one do you go for? Because the 120X has that Technix DJ aesthetic. It has those convenience features. It has the built-in features. It has the ease of use. And it also has that sound, which is superior to the Lenko, which is fine. But what the 09 has that the 120X does not is this. The 09 offers an alternative design that might lean towards your personal preference. The 120X offers a classic direct drive Technics alike appearance. Now, some potential customers will love that look. Others may see the 120X as rather old fashioned with a rather tired aesthetic. And there is no doubt that the 09 from Lenko does have a rather stylish look. It has a rather trim appearance. It has a rather modern swish. It looks neater. It looks tidier. So on that basis alone, you might be swayed to buy the Lenko. It's a choice. The Lenko is an alternative on that score alone. The Riga RP1 is similarly superior in sound to the 09, but it lacks those convenience features and ease of use. And the Riga could be said to be a little plain, a little bit bland, as it were, when you compare the Riga with the Lenko's rather jazzier aesthetic. As for the Fluence RT81, well, the 09 can hold its own in sound terms. It trades punches quite well. It does lose out against the RT81 around the lower end, but it has a superior suite of upper frequencies, especially with an upgraded cartridge to match the RT81s. And that, to you, might be a critical point. The 09 is also slightly superior in sound terms to the 08, and for many, the look of the 09 may also be superior to the 08. In short, this mere Chinese turntable is surprisingly good in both aesthetic terms, in sound terms, in terms of the feature set, in terms of ease of use. As an aside, because time did defeat me here, but I would also look at further upgrades for the 09. Things that spring to mind include replacing the mat with a cork rubber combo and also damping underneath the rather thin aluminium platter. Sticky sorbethane pads spring to mind. The sound quality of the 09 is, relatively speaking, a big surprise here. Out of the box, it offers a good performance, but dare to upgrade the L3809 with a VM95E cartridge, and you've got yourself a worthy budget turntable contender here. In short, the L3809 is a little gem of a turntable, and it can easily compete in the budget turntable sector, especially with those upgrades I've just recommended. It's a competitor. It's a good alternative for some users. And that's the crux here. It depends on you. It depends what you're looking for. It depends what's important for you. But on that basis, the Lenko L3809 is a viable choice. I recommend it. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for sticking to the end of this video. And if I can ask for just a smidge more support, please, because I do value your support thus far, of course, if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons, I'd be absolutely overjoyed. And of course, it helps the channel to grow because YouTube loves all that like subscribe business. Don't forget to check the description below. There are chapter headings a go go down there. There's also lots of links on my website. There's lots of editorial on there that you won't see on this channel. If you can support me on Patreon, I am on Patreon. So check that too. There's some exclusive material over a Patreon. You might want to check that out. But I'll be back. I'll be back next week with yet another video. And I'd love to see you. I'd love to have your company. But until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.